I was born in Miami, um, and then I was raised in New York. I went to New York when I was about five years old. It was very interesting. <laughs> um, very, very interesting, I guess. Um, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> um, the reality is I don't think anybody grows up in a perfect home, but um, the actual reason why I left from Florida to New York is because of kind of a change in custody. So um, when I was about five years old, we were living with my dad in Florida. It was me and my brother, my dad and mom. My mom would often leave at different times to go to New York or whatever. And um, she had come back and my dad said somehow, I knew that we wouldn't be coming back. Um, so I went to him and I said that, um, don't let us go to Florida, don't, don't let us go to New York. And he told me that to not pretty much don't worry about it, she's gonna bring us back, cause she has to by law. And I told him that she's not going to. Um, and I told him to make a promise that if she didn't bring us back, that he would fight for us until he won custody. <laughs> so um, being in New York was kind of, it was like had its up and down. There were some levels, you know, of abuse, but there's some good times, I guess you'd say, like in regards to, we went to church um, and a number of good things did happen. Um, but it was a very interesting, I guess, childhood. <laughs> I'll say the kindest, if there was a physical person, like the first person that came to my mind would be my brother. Um, we're about a year and a half apart. I'm older than him. Um, the reason why I say he's the kindest is because he's been there the most. And even though I was kind of the meanest and like negative in regards to my, the way that I treated him, um, he just remained just still loving and always there. Um, so we have a really close relationship. Um, but if I would answer the question in regards to just person, I would say God. Um, you know, Jesus. <laughs> um, the reason being is because obviously his faithfulness and just the reality of just throughout the years of how much I've gotten to know him, like how much he's pretty much revealed himself to me and how much I've gotten to just experience him and known him and how faithful he's been and patient and kind and just in relationship wise. Um, in regards to how my relationship is with him now, I would say that he's still like, you know, the lover of my soul one of my, like my best friend kind of thing. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess love can be one of the most painful things, but then the most rewarding things. Um, I think the way that I grew up with the absence of love in regards to from my mom and different things like that, um, and experiencing just great levels of rejection and shame, um, I kind of more leaned towards that I didn't need anybody um, and I didn't want anybody there. And I thought the, the, the idea of risking myself or opening myself up to love anybody for the, just for them to be able to possibly hurt me wasn't worth it. But when, um, when after like having a relationship with God and him healing me and him restoring me and um, him just taking the time to actually love me when I, when I couldn't love myself or even really fully love him back, um, it's demonstrated to me that it can become one of the most rewarding things. Um, as he's taught me just pretty much how much every single person as a human being desires love. Different life experiences originally first taught me that I kind of didn't want it, I didn't want anything to do with it. But then as I've grown in my relationship with God, I realized love is the foundation of everything. Um, from marriage, from relationships with children, from relationship with others, and the absence of real love and, and um, just based on how, you know, I just, I believe that God is love and the reality of just the absence of God and the absence of love <laughs> um, is really, I think, where people miss it. I would describe it as, um, obviously the certain the attributes that are described in 1 Corinthians of it being patient, um, it being kind, um, it not you know, wanting personal gain, I would describe it as it covering a multitude of sin, it being patient and long-suffering, um, it being everything, whether we realize it or not, um, it, like, and it being a necessity, something that you can't really live without. Um, but ultimately, I would describe it as God um, and everything that He is. 
um, I think one of the key ways that I demonstrate <laughs> love in my life personally is something that I just recently, a book that I just um, got done listening to, The Five Love Languages. So we all do receive and give love differently. Um, one of the ways that I, one of my love languages is quality time. <laughs> um, so the people that are involved in my life, one of the greatest ways I think that I try to love them is by giving them of my time um, and letting them know that they have access to me. But then I've also been very intentional knowing how other people receive love. Um, so people that are maybe their love language is more physical touch, you know, giving them a pat on the back or giving them a high five or if it's, you know, words of affirmation, being the one to make sure I affirm them, um, especially because I am involved with the young adults in my church. So um, just different people, I'll ask actually everybody almost that question, what is your love language? And the reason why I ask is because of just them want, um, wanting them to know that I do care. But then I also pray that I can be a conduit of God's love. Um, so whether it be just being a good listener or just being, taking the time to pray for somebody who not, whether they know that I am or not or um, being patient or when somebody messes up you're realizing like having the opportunity to be able to show mercy to them um, and being a conduit of that. I would hope others oh man I would hope others will be able to go further than I have. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I if I get the opportunity to ever talk to somebody about God, other than experiencing a number, you know, salvation and a number of other things in scripture is his ability to heal. Um, because it's something that he's done for me, um, delivering me from shame and just so much inner pain. And so that's something that I always, if there's any amount of contact with me that I bring up because we're all broken. You know, there's nobody that we come across that isn't. So if I could ever allow them to experience, whether it be a healing, but just the reality of how close a relationship with God we can have and realizing that he's no respecter of persons, realizing that he is an actual person, that he has emotions, he has feelings. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to have fellowship with us, uh, wants to have fellowship with us. So, so something that I could pour, like, you know, or have, Every person I come in contact with that they could have, whether they forget my name or don't ever remember me, is that one, that God's able to heal them, that everything that they're looking for is, can be found in God. And just the reality of how deeply he is in love with them and how much he desires a relationship with them. If that can somehow in some shape or form be planted in their heart and they could experience that for themselves, that's everything for me. Like, you know, so yeah.